We'll pray and start. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, God, that um, Lord, that you are with us. And um, thank you for the great reassurance, God. And uh, when you are with us, Lord, amazing things happen. Lord, we thank you that, um, uh, Lord, you're just making um, a way where there seems to be no way in our lives. Lord, whenever we reach the end of the road, you're always there, God. I thank you that you're at the end of every crossroad, every every major decision, every minor decision. God, you're always there. We thank you. We thank you for the hope that we have, a continuous source of hope. That's who you are. That's what you give us, Lord. And uh, even in the most dire of circumstances, there's always a continuous flow of hope and the continuous flow of comfort that comes from you, from your presence, God. And um, every day is an opportunity for us to be strengthened. Every day is an opportunity for us to be filled with your spirit, Lord, to be anointed afresh, God. And we can declare, like the psalmist did, that I've been anointed with fresh oil. And uh, Lord, today we just ask for that fresh oil, Lord, that we will be anointed with fresh oil, that we'll be uh, filled afresh, God, to see things anew to look at things, Lord, the way you see, God, um, to think the way you think, oh, Father God. Let your thoughts be our thoughts, Lord. Um, saturate our minds with your thoughts, God. We thank you. <clears throat> we commit this time into your mighty hands. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, we have Tayesha presenting um, right now and then followed by... Um, Salome, right? Uh, go ahead, Taisha. Okay, just a minute, Pastor. I thought it was Salome first. I'm sorry. Just a minute. Are you hearing me clearly? Is everyone hearing me clearly? Um, maybe you can. Uh, yeah, we can increase our volume. It's it's a little muted, okay. muted in the I sense it's uh, it's it's not very sharp. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it could be better, but, um, yeah. Can you just, uh, speak again, please? <clears throat> um, can you check again, Tayesha? Um, it's still <laughs> muted. Your mic is muted, so. Um, can you can you just uh, put it on the chat if you're having some issues? Because we can't hear you right now. Are you hearing me now, Pastor? Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's very clear. Yeah, please go okay. ahead. Thanks. Okay, just a Are you ready to start, Tayesha? Yes, sir. Can I go ahead now? Yeah, yeah please go ahead. Yeah, okay. Start. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this, my presentation this morning. It is titled, There's Hope in Jesus. Okay. 
I will start with a point. It says, no hope, no hope, exclaimed the paper boy, riding through the streets of gloom and gloom. The sky is falling, says the acorn. No one will left here. No hope, asked the people in despair. Who is going to save us in this land of gloom and doom? Surely not Superman. He's long dead and gone. Neither the dark night, it's too dark for him to see. Oh, we must put our hope in the Savior, as in him all can all hope can be found. Though today seems like hope is a scarce commodity. Many of us, we can't afford to place our hope in anything or anyone anymore. Even the Son of God, it seems impossible. The weight of everything around us weighing us down, matters of the heart. We may sometimes feel forgotten by people, even forgotten by God. Or you could it be that you're grieving a loss, someone that you've, a, a loved one you've lost, or you're just facing health challenges, or this maybe, could it be that this giant that call itself COVID and the pandemic is weighing so much on you that your faith seems so dim in this time. Whatever the reason or reasons may be that you're losing hope, I can assure you can find hope in Jesus, the Son of God. He is the light sent to save us in this dark and dying world. Let me share a story with you. During World War II, six pilots took off from an aircraft carrying North Atlantic scout to scout some enemy submarines. While they were gone, the captain carrier was forced to issue a blackout alarm. The ship went totally dark. When the pilots tried to return, they could not find the ship. They radioed, give us some light. We're coming home. The ship's radio operator replied, ordered, blackout. I cannot give you light. In turn, each pilot desperately radioed the same message, give us some light. I'll make it. Each time the operator had to radio back, no light, blackout. Because there was no light, that because there was no light on the ship, six young pilots went to their graves in that icy North Atlantic. This was adapted from the Encyclopedia of 1700 illustration, 5 or 366, right? We see that grave story that the, there was no light. But Jesus, the Son of God, is the light of the world. He is the Savior that came, died, he was born, died, and risen so that we can have hope in him. Hope is found in the promises God has given us, promises of freedom from sin. We can find so much hope in the scriptures, which he has gifted us eternal life, made possible through Jesus, his son. No matter what trials, temptation, pain, or maybe suffering, we can always hold on to the hope extended to us by God. So here are some scriptures. Matthew 12, 21 tells us, in his name, nations will put their hope. 1 John 5, verse 3, 13 and 14 said, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life and that this in that in this confidence that you have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And 1 Peter 1, 3 to 6, reassures that blessed be the God, the Father, or Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy, he has caused us to born again to a living hope through resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being graded through faith for salvation, ready to be relieved in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now, for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith more precious than gold, 
that perishes, though it tested by fire, may be found to result in praise, glory, honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So friends, there is hope in the Son of God. And if you're not at all convinced, remember the trials you go through, the hardship you face. God loves you. And he promises in Jeremiah 29, 11, that for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you and to give you a hope and a future you can trust God. And Romans 12, 12 says, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, and faithful in prayer. Friends, Romans 15, 4 tells us, for everything that was written in past was written to teach us so that through endurance, taught in the scriptures, that encouragement me, that encouragement they provide you might have hope. And finally, Psalm 147.11 says, The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. God is not far from us. It doesn't matter what it looks like now. There is hope in God. You may say, how are some practical ways I may can build my faith in my time of dismay, though I've been praying and I'm not seeing anything happening? I say, look beyond the scene and look in the unseen. The, speech, the scripture tells us to speak the things as if it were. So, so I say to you, some practical ways you can apply to your life situation, whatever it is, if your hope seems like there's no light, there is a blackout in your life. Light has come today. And as Jesus said to Nicodemus, salvation has come to your whole house. Hope has come to your house. I would say to you, get on your knees. Start praying. Start, talk to someone in your life group, your pastor. Get counseling. You don't have to go through this alone. Reflect on your blessings instead of your what is going wrong because what is going wrong is only temporary find your praise song do your praise dance i know it is difficult you may say what a praise dance while i'm suffering i feel as if it's i'm the i'm the strongest man or woman on earth i say to you lift your praise because david if we could take a leaf out of his life the book of his life he went through hardships in cave. We know the story. But he found hope and refuge in God. Psalm 46 verse the Lord is a refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And I say to you, friends, apply the word. The word never fails. He says before the word fall, fall away, heaven and earth will fall away. You never, it will never steer you wrong. Let it be your compass, your light. And finally, Romans 8, 28. For I know all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and call a country's purpose. God got everything in his hands. Hope in him, trusting him. Let me end with a prayer for you. Father, I thank you that you send your light to this world that seemed to be on a blackout, especially in this time where people are afraid to even talk or touch each other. Where they seem like darkness all around. I thank you for stretching and sending your light. Even if it's a candle. Even if it's a flicker on a mattress day. I thank you for sending hope to this dying world. To our hearts everywhere. So let each heart, the light in our hearts, light the way for each one that is lost today. Help us to be our brother's keeper, come in agreement with our brothers and sisters that are feeling hopeful today. In Jesus' name, be with them now and forevermore. Strengthen their hearts and their faith that after they have come through, they can strengthen their brothers and sisters of faith. In Jesus' name.
That's it, Pastor. Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was wonderful. Thank you, you Tayesha. Um, yeah, so it was like listening to a radio broadcast. I don't know about the, how the others felt, but it was um, really, you know, listening to a radio broadcast or a podcast. It was wonderful uh, the way you presented. Um, yeah, and uh, um, especially the allegory of light and the blackout. And uh, I think one could um, really, um, um, you know, picture the whole thing. Um, very visual, I think, the way you presented it. Uh, you took your time, it was very clear, and and also the thoughts, um, you know, not just the um, the practical side of the tone and the way you said it, but um, but really the uh, the way you presented, but but also the thoughts of uh, very encouraging about hope and love and uh, yeah. Um, so I was I was really trying to you know. Uh, trying to analyze at the same time, trying to receive. Um, uh, so that was my struggle, really. So I was trying to put the analytical cap on and and see, you know, look at the um, the technical side of what you're presenting at the same time. Just wanted to relax and receive what you were saying. So yeah, it was really good. And and also the, some of the things that you presented towards the end, you know, look beyond what look beyond the scene you know that was that was nice look beyond what in other words look beyond what you see at the unseen and pray and, and get counsel and count your blessings and um, you know get your praise on lift your praise and uh, yeah so all those things um so maybe um you know uh, so it, it was uh, it, it was well presented and, and 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 the application part you know um maybe uh, you can always take time reiterate and that would be that would be great as well Right, and it's good that you, and especially starting with a poem and the story, World War II story, and ending with a prayer. Yeah, it was good. Um, very blessed. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. You're welcome, Pastor. Thank you. Thank you, right. classmates. God bless you. God bless. Okay, so next we have uh, Salome. So, Salome, if you're ready, um, yes, you can go ahead. Yeah, go I ahead. I want to present my screen. Is that okay? Sure. Go ahead. Can you see my screen? Can you see my screen, Pastor? Yes, yes. Um, it's not in the, you know, uh, the slideshow view, but yes. uh, yeah, but we can see it now. Um, it's not yet gone into slideshow. Um, oh. Yeah, maybe you can do a Shift F five. It'll go into that. Um, Um, but if you want to present it this way, that's also fine. Um, yeah, you just do. Uh, yeah, you just say from the beginning, and you know that. Yeah, just, I did that, but it didn't. It's not uh, coming out. It's not okay. coming. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you can, and uh, we can see it. It's quite clear. You can do this. No, not a problem. Okay, Pastor. Okay. Okay. Uh, hello, praise the Lord. And today my topic is on relationship. And I would like to give a short testimony before I start my presentation. So uh, I had like a lot of friends in the start and who were like way too important in my life. And I used to give them like priority way too much. And after um, this few years back, I lost my sister. And for a very long time, I used to blame myself for not spending enough time with her. And then I realized that, you know, I have been far from Christ and not intentionally, but it just happened because I used to prioritize my friends and I started spending more time with God. I started, you know, getting closer to Christ. I started reading his word and that's why I even joined the Bible college. And uh, surprisingly, uh, lately I've been losing my friends and I was wondering where did I go wrong? Like what happened? And uh, then I realized that God was keeping good friends around me, a friends who were trying to who, who builds me up in Christ more and more and friends who were wanted good for me and friends, you know, um, who uh, wanted like best for me. And that's how I realized that, you know, God keeps a relationship in your life where who are better for you, not like who you choose, but 
who God thinks is good for you. So um, we all certainly have a relationship, but most of us don't have a clear understanding to how to keep it. So my presentation refers to couples, but those who aren't in a relationship can think of some uh, friendship or family member. So the first and most important, we need to keep Christ as a center. Christ centered, intentionally centering your relationship on Jesus is all important. And even in John 13, verse 34 says, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. But how do you actually do that? So here's what worked in most of the relationships. Step one, decide and commit. Have a conversation together to be sure you're shooting for the same goal. christ Center means that your relationship is fully committed to Christ. Everything else is secondary. Try creating some belief statements that highlight how Christ will be at the center of your lives. Like decide together that we will serve the Lord. And that's what is given in Joshua 24, 15. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Second, we will trust the Lord. And that's what is given in Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. And the third thing it says, we will surrender to the Lord. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33 says, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Fourth, we will follow the Lord. That's what is given in Deuteronomy 13, verse 4. You shall follow the Lord your God and fear him, and you shall keep his commandments, listen to his voice, serve him, and cling to him. Then step, steps two says, individually seek God. Seeking God as individual is a requirement of having a Christ-centered relationship together. To be unified together with Christ at the center, we must connect ourselves to Christ first. When we take our relationship with God seriously, he brings the unity. And that's what it says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 6. But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door. And pray to your father who is in secret. And your father who sees in secret will reward you. Step three says, together seek God. We should make time to connect spiritually every day as a couple. This is where it gets fun. In order to keep your focus on him, there are several things you can do. Your relationship may be strong in prayer. Or maybe you may serve at church or in your community together consistently, or discuss God's word, or worship the Lord together and create his songs together. So you, may, so whatever God has given you as a couple, go with it. It's amazing to discuss what God is showing us individually and where he's leading two people. When Christ is at the center of your relationship, he will do more than you could hope to accomplish on your own even on your best days. That's what is given in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back and conquer. Three are even better, for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. So that's why when you are two person and when God is in the center, nothing can be broken easily. So take a step to put him first. Thank you and God bless. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Zalami. So, so this is for those who are married and those who are considering marriage. Uh, who's your target audience? Um, actually, I prefer a couple, but it's also for those people who are not in a couple, but uh, have a close friendship or a family member is close to you. So you can refer to both. Right. I think that that's uh, that's good wisdom and truth in it, you know. Uh, and I think it was a very very wholesome uh, message, because um, uh, you know the whole thing of um, seeking God together, seeking God individually, and taking a step and putting God first, and um, you know, very practical and very very um, useful. And um, yeah, so what I would say is, you know, if you are if you are presenting it to, um, let's say, um, you know, people who are single, 
and you could always um, add certain things like you know godly boundaries and so on and you can you know uh, expand the message that way and uh, when it's to when it's for married couples obviously you know you can talk about um, you know um, building a family altar parenting and all those things. it can go in that direction as well but uh, yeah but really good um, and very very concise and uh, yeah but you had a lot more time um, I know, so, Pastor. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry. I think that's why you asked what is the minimum time. <laughs> yes, <required>. Pastor. <laughs> yeah. Okay, fine. Thank you, Salome. So Thank was, you, Pastor. Uh, Thank that you. That was good. Praise God. Okay. Um, yeah, we also have Louis. Um, Louis, are you ready to present today? Um, Louis Ola Oluafemi. Um, good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I don't, I've been struggling with this message for two weeks, and I don't know why. Okay, I'll just try today. Okay. So, um, j just a minute before you start. You know, I just want to request everyone. Uh, I think we might go a little bit uh, beyond. Um, you know, uh, eleven fifty. So just hang around, right? Okay. Yeah. Please go ahead, Louis. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Um, Father, we thank you for I pray for all times this morning in the name of Jesus. Um, the topic is the understanding the mystery of our inheritance in Christ, and but the subtopic is double portion. Now, in the Old Testament, um, the most um, if I use the word double portion, the most scripture that comes to mind is the issue between Elijah and Elisha. And uh, in that regard, yes, we talk about this um, double portion anointing and all of that. But I just want to be brief and say that most times the, the base for the double portion in terms of Jewish culture was a thing of if the man had um, seven sons and he wanted to share his inheritance, the first one most times is always considered to be the first one who he gives a double portion. That means he shares his inheritance into, into eight and gives the first son double of the inheritance. That's basically what the double portion was about. That signifies the community um, that this is my first point. Now in um, Psalms it's nine to into seven it it, it says um, I will I will raise me a first point shall be and shall be king and shall be above the kings of the earth. Now when Christ came on the scene he said his message was um, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. The word repent there says change the way you think. In other words, you have come from a Jewish background, but now there is a new concept on the on the on ground that says you should change the way you think, change the way you have seen things, change the way you have perceived God, change the way you have seen him as not just God, but now I want to present him as a father. So it takes a father to give a son an inheritance. But sometimes if you have that disconnect between us as father as sons to God, then there's a disconnect to what our inheritance can be can be um, given to us. So there is sometimes in our work in life to take our eyes off God as Father. And um, in I uh, think Matthew Matthew said that Christ is the express image of the Father, the express image. In other words. If I have doubt of what the Father looks like, then if I look at Jesus from the Word of God, He will give me an inclination into what the image of God looks like. If I have an issue with the character of God, if I have an issue with, with, with the tendencies of God towards me, He says, if I look at Jesus, if I look at Jesus through the Word of God, I will have an inclination of what the Father's dispositions are towards me. Now, um, Jeremiah says, the thoughts I have towards you are thoughts of good and not of evil to bring you an experience. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, not that my ways are your ways. In other words, there is a discrepancy between how God thinks and how we think. But to connect it together, he says, if I behold Jesus, then I can understand what the Father's heart is towards me. So that's why it says of David, it says, if David was a man after my heart. David was a man after my heart. Now, I, I want to pursue God. I want to know God. I want to understand this, quote unquote, the mystery called God. But sometimes there is a disconnect somewhere, uh, uh, maybe because of the, the, my background for coming from a family where my dad was not upholding the standard of fatherhood, or maybe I come from a place where there were abuses. So it distorted my mind a bit to say, what does even the Heavens Father look like, or what does Heavenly Father 
think of me. So sometimes whatever he has for me, I cannot get it because there is a disconnect. But it says Christ is the express image because he's called the firstborn from the dead. In other words, the one that came alive unto us at a time that where it's possible for us to come alive to God. So in essence, it, it, it takes us to the point to say, Jesus saying that do not worry about what, just allow me form an image. So he says in, um, I think Ephesians says, so that we can be conformed to the image of the Christ. So the journey of the inheritance is that ultimately we be conformed to the image of the Christ. We be conformed to the image of the Christ. Now it says Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is one instance. And now it says, um, until Christ be formed in us. Until Christ be formed. So now that it just, there's a dimension where it says Christ, we in Christ, it, 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 it does the, the well, let, me, let me refresh that. It says Christ in you, the hope of glory. So now, but he says now we are one in Christ, we are joined here with Christ, but there's also the part where Christ wants to be formed on the inside so that we come to the measure of the stature of Christ. Because at that point, the Father can commit to us his inheritance. The Father can commit to us the things he has planned for us. The Father can commit to the things that we so desire. Now, this is not about just acting and receiving. This is ultimately about what the Father wants to communi communicate to us from the realms of fatherhood to sons. Because he has considered us son, but sometimes we feel like we don't measure up. Sometimes we feel like there's something missing in our relationship with God. And God is saying that the thing is that I am more willing to give to you than you are more willing to receive. I'm more willing to give to you than I'm more willing to receive. But just in case there's a distrust in your mind and there's a need for, for, for repentance, there's a need for you to shift the way you think about me, just look at Jesus. Just behold Jesus and you will come to a place where you begin to measure up to who I call a son or who I call the firstborn son that has the inheritance, my total inheritance. Now in the Old Testament, it was giving a portion, but in the Bible says the fullness of the Spirit. So Christ in Christ, there was no half measure or little measure, it causes the fullness of the measures of God, the fullness of what God has for us all, the fullness of God's plans for us, our lives. But sometimes, we, it, like I always say, it, it's like we are fully sure, but Christ says, just behold me. Allow me, form me inside of you by the Spirit of God. Allow me to walk the walk of grace in your life. Allow me to do the things that only me can do, and you will begin to, in quote unquote, measure up. Just measure up to what God has for you. Measure up the things that God wants you to do in life. Measure up to the visions that he has put in your heart. Measure up to your desires on the earth. Measure up to the, to the great works he has put in your hands. Um, I know many of us on the platform are into ministries, and sometimes I feel like, am I good enough for what God has called me to do? Yes, you are good enough, because he found you um, not wording yourself, but worded that he was. He found it measurable to the things he has called you. So we're saying that this morning that... Um, we want the work of grace to work in our hearts so that we we'll begin to behold ourselves as Christ beholds us. That way our mind is being shifted and adjusted and adjusted to the point where it aligns to the intent and the purposes of God. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Louis. So, um, I think that was a very, very prophetic, very revelatory uh, message, identity, the link between identity and inheritance, right? Um, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Also, um, yeah, I just wanted to request, uh, if you can, if you have the notes, uh, if you can also put that up in the stream, because at some places, the audio wasn't very clear. So oh, we couldn't really... I'm sorry uh, about that. Uh, now, now it's clear, actually. So... Um, so uh, we couldn't really. I mean, I I had some. Okay, I'll drop the notes, sir. Yeah, you can you can do the notes. You can yeah, you can share the notes with us. I think that'll be great. Um, yeah. So um, so that was good. Thank you. Um, really, um, uh, was a blessing, and uh, um, I think I think that that really stirred stirred us up. I don't know about uh, the others, but really <laughs> stirred us up. Um, you know to to just go to the secret place, <laughs> you know, uh, to go to the secret place and stay there. Just behold uh, the Lord and uh, allow him to, you know, just uh, just reminded of 2 Corinthians 3.18 that uh, uh, the glimpse, you know, that we uh, take a glimpse of him and we are being changed from glory to glory. So kind of, um, I think you just carry that uh, on you to stir people to, 
you know move people to intimacy with god i think uh, you should just continue to do whatever it is that you're doing um thank you sir yeah thank praise god much. yeah yeah so god bless uh, thank you everyone i think we finished on time though we didn't start on time uh again uh, apologies for starting late uh, about the mix up um so what we will do is uh, we'll have one last class on wednesday so uh wednesday first hour um we'll meet and uh, some closing comments and then we'll pray and then we'll close so i i don't know like how many of you are continuing with the course so just like to take some time to pray i think we have a group of fantastic uh spokespersons for god you know we have a uh, in our class i mean from whatever i've seen and heard we have a bunch of people who uh, are really on fire who carry uh, the wisdom of god uh who carry this anointing in earthen vessels so um i i i, I, I don't know I, i'm really really happy to have made your acquaintance and to have you know you have blessed me personally with your uh, with every message that you guys have shared so so thank you so much um uh, i just want to yeah share some closing comments uh, next class so uh, wednesday Uh, we will we'll probably won't use up the whole 1 hour uh, or 50 minutes um but uh, we'll meet on wednesday first hour right okay charles you have a question yeah it's not a question but yep. um it's to say thank you because uh the way you teach us the the methodology you use it is so so peculiar we we must underscore this that you are the class above class um because the way you teach us the the way you begin with prayer the way there is a way you 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 connect us however much we have um affected you um that you've known us but you have uh at around 1000% uh, made us see god through you so thank you so much um for the time that you invest in this because it is not an issue of coming and teaching but it is a matter of time that you have invested in this may god bless you richly bless you amina thank you thank you charles humble to hear that thank you so much all glory to god praise god um, so yeah so uh, so everyone will will catch up on wednesday yeah uh, on time this time god bless have a great weekend bye bye Thank you Pastor God bless you too.